welcome to Blitz Chess number 22. In this video, I'm going to play a Blitz game and I'm going to walk you through what I think. Your job as a viewer is to pause the video from time to time, maybe ask yourself, what would I do in this position? And in that way, we can all learn. Okay, so we found an opponent. We're playing with the black pieces. Good luck. We're going to play knight of 6 against d4. Probably going to be a queen's, a, a, a declined queen's gambit. c4, e6, very natural. I can go for knight of 3. Maybe white wants to go for... Yeah, there we go, knight c3. The Babylon stuff. Okay, so knight c3 normally is not good because it blocks the c-pawn. But after lots of theory and, let's say, 10 years of experimenting from grandmasters and players like Jababa, Jababa, which is the, the guy that this opening is named after, um, and other players, Rapport, um, who else plays this? Naroditsky. Um, this opening is pretty dangerous, so I'm going to play g6. I'm going to go for King's Indian style kind of, um, kind of uh, structure. I'm going to castle. This bishop c4 move, always scary to play as white because, exactly. So, for example, white already has to worry about tricks like knight takes c4 and d5, with, with which, sorry, would equalize immediately for black. So, queen e2 played. And now, believe it or not, I kind of like my position. I'm going to play bishop g4. Not only this bishop on c8 finds, finds, has a hard time finding a good square. And e5 played. I think that's pretty premature. Hmm. How do we prove this is premature? Or maybe it's not premature. e5, I don't think white is developed enough to, to go for e5. Look at the king. The king, the bishop, I mean, maybe it's okay, but... Let me see, let me think. If I go d5, that's losing after e takes f6, and then that, that because I'm losing two manor pieces, and white is only losing one. If I take, which is the most obvious move, um, then white takes back. And it's, it's, it's one of those questions where would I rather do something now or do something after this and that? Which I think the answer is probably I want to do something now instead of taking right away. That's what I mean. So 97, it comes to my mind. Um, 98 is a very sad move. So if anything, I want to play knight d7, putting pressure on e5 even more with the bishop, with the pawn and with the knight. The freshly, freshly, um, freshly appeared knight on d7. But the problem with that is that e6 is, a, is, 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 is in the air. And if I have to take, 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 then white is pretty happy. 97 e6. I could also go takes, takes, 97 e6, and knight e5. And if takes, I just play king h8. Which is an interesting idea. And I, I'm kind of in love with this now. Because I like sacrificing pawns for the sake of opening lines. And not only that, I like weird looking moves. Unfortunately. Which is something that will haunt me for the rest of my life. But this is the way I play chess. Um, jokes aside, I think that this is a decent position. I will damage white's pawn structure from the king side. Which is, I believe, where, where, where white wanted to castle in the first place. I could do it with the knight as well. And play bishop f5 and play e6 and try to take like that. But for now, I think this at least is going to give black an interesting game. I'm not saying I'm slightly better. I think that this is at least equal, if not some practical chances. And this is very, very important to, to, to differentiate. When you're looking at a game, when you're analyzing a game, after this, let's, let, let's say I look at the engine and the engine says this is plus one for white. Well, for a human, this is very difficult to know. Um, or to, to understand why this is, this is so, such a big uh, advantage. It's, it's not that straightforward. Don't, don't, don't let yourself be fooled by the computer. Um, I'm going to play knight c6, trying to get knight d4, bishop b3, good move, preventing that. And I, I, I think I can take now. If h3, unfortunately I will probably have to take, take... h3, take, take, do I have any tricks there? Or any ideas, I should say. Playing for tricks is not good. I'm going to take once with the, with the bishop, and then I'm going to take on f7. This is the way I find the game flowing. Something very important to, to, to try to achieve in your games. Don't, don't get stuck. Get, get your pieces going. Make use of all your, all, your, all your strength. So, for example, this rook is not doing anything. I'm, I'm going to play queen d7 at some point. And, oh, h4. This is interesting. 
Interesting move. Yeah, that's a very interesting move. For I forgot this is Blitz. I'm gonna play Queen D6 if I get the chance. Actually, I, I have an idea. Rook G1, Ninety-five, F4, this, F3 takes. I'm happy with that. I think. White is, white is not allowed to castle because my queen is on the way. So that's good. Yeah. I suspect that this was going to happen. The question is... Is this good for Mr. White? I'm going to play queen d6. We're up the exchange, but of course, it's more than that. I'm going to play rook f5 if white gives me the chance. Maybe I should have played... Ah, no, that's a horrible move. Queen the uh, 94, sorry, runs into this, I think. I'm gonna play Queen F6 now. In 94 now, Queen F5. I'm gonna play this either way. Queen H6. Hope I'm not blundering anything. Queen H1 is now an idea. If I get to trade lots of pieces, I'm gonna be very happy. Okay, I'm gonna go for E5 now. Which maybe is the most suspicious move I've ever played in my entire life. But my my <laughs> I'm claiming that after this, I should be fine. Because of this, I'd sake, this, I'd sake. Why does get that? But I have check. King H6, away from all the minor pieces. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm doing well. I'm starting to check, and if, for example, if the white king goes to the D file at all, I'm going to trade with rook AD8. And I have a lot of material. So rook takes e7, probably kind of forced. How do I finish this game? Check. King d2. Check. Okay, no. Take this. Now I can trade everything and it should be in relatively easy. Relatively easy conversion. Okay, let's attack the pawn again. 94, I think, rook f4 is now winning. So 90, 91 has to be played again. Very sad move, and I'm just going to put all my pawns in, in light squares. And don't get me wrong, it's, it's something that you hear your coach telling you all the time. Put your pawns in the opposite color of your opponent's bishop. Um, which is true, but also, depending on the position, you want sometimes to limit your opponent's bishop, sometimes you want to put your pawns in, in, in a way... Where they're not a weakness. It depends on the position, as everything else. Principles are there to guide us, not to not to be used as absolute truth. 92, King G4. 91 is kind of a threat. Maybe. I'll give it another check. Let me get some time. Rook D8. I'm going to start invading soon. My opponent's playing well. Oh, I blundered this. But I think it's okay. No, it's not okay. Maybe it is okay. Wow, it somehow miraculously took... Oh, it's not okay. Okay, now I'm going to focus, really. Okay, I have a draw. We have a draw in our pocket. Not the best, considering we were doing better than that. But we're gonna try our best. I'm gonna try to get king e5. We're losing our pawns. This is a prime example of the pawns now being a weakness. <laughs> I'm gonna play king e4. Bishop d3, king d5. Oof. Very scary. I'm not going to move this pawn. I think that this pawn here, if I move it to a5, is going to be more of a weakness. So I'm going to let... I'm going to let white go for that. That was a very poor conversion by me. I apologize. I ruined the position. I, I, I need to learn how to... I need to learn when to talk and when not to talk. 
Okay, rook a3. This, king d6, king c5 plan. As far as we can. Not a four. King d4. This is extremely complicated. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, um, we ruined our big advantage, and I think that I had to, I had to, some somewhere over here, I had to really, um, really just concentrate a little bit more to finish the game off for for good. But on the on the positive side, even after the blunder, uh, I think we we made our our, our opponent's life as miserable as possible. We are losing in this endgame, by the way. I think that this is losing if white plays absolutely um, the best moves. It is tricky because the rooks are rooks are tricky, but two pieces should win the game. And even now, I think white was doing very good progress until this point where everything I'm hoping for is something like knight d5 and knight b5. Blocking the only legal move I have with the king. And this is a very common motive because now I have this stalemate idea. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, hope that I was instructive to some level, I promise I will learn how to convert positions like this and not keep talking and yeah, I have lots of things to improve, we all have lots of things to learn. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice day.